what I want to do here is um, answer some basic questions and just go through a, a simple setup of a WLED on DigUno, if I didn't just ruin this antenna. But... So this is DigUno, and this is actually the external antenna version, just because that happens to be what I've got handy here. The question is, how do I flash a new WLED release? When you get one of these pre pre-built devices from me or from Quindorps, DigUno, DigQuad, uh, Pixel Pro, and who knows what else we come up with as time goes by. But when you get one of these, it comes with WLED on it. You don't need to connect it and flash it at all, okay? If you want to update it, you do that over the air. That is the best way to do it. Now, on the new versions of these, you don't need to specify 12 volts or 5 volts. It doesn't matter what it is. It will send whatever you connect. It will send that straight onto the LEDs. So make sure if you've got 5 volt LEDs that you've got a uh, 5 volt power supply. If you've got 12 volt LEDs, you're going to want a 12 volt power supply or your LEDs won't work very well. And it will send just a few 5 volts to the controller that it needs. And there it goes. Oop. All right. So when it first comes on, when you first power it up, you get two little lights. These are the, this is the new version. There used to be like if you had one of these old uh, D1 minis that would have a blue light. But this has an orange light here and an orange light on the board, okay? The first thing you need to do, or the next thing to do, I guess, is to go to your Wi-Fi networks and see if you get a new one popped up that says WLED AP. Oops, right there, WLED AP. <laughs> there it is, okay? So it's on my phone, whatever, fine. First thing, if you want to, you can go to the controls, okay? Then config and security and updates. So to answer that question of, oh, I guess this isn't gonna work very well. This, this would work if it was on your computer and you had downloaded the, up, the, the latest version of WLED. But this is where you do it. So I would recommend you just do it this way. You avoid the possibility of not having drivers on your computer or the USB cable not being right or whatever else. Although it is pretty awesome now that you can go to install. I'm going to go this way here. You can go to this install WLED.me and install this way. That's pretty cool. It works pretty well. But you still need to have the right drivers uh, installed on your computer. My point for showing this is that you don't have to flash WLED on these controllers. If you get a DigiUno or a DigQuad or a Pixel Pro or whatever else we come up with, if we're selling it to you, me, Quindor, it's going to have... Unless, you've, unless, unless it specifically says it doesn't, something we, do, we have been selling the ESP32s without anything on them. But unless it specifically says it doesn't have something on it, it has something on it. Right? It has WLED. And when you first start it up, or, or once you've got it running like this, powered up, you can update the software right here. So what you would do is download the latest version, OTA, manual OTA update page. You can download the latest binary right there. It says download the latest binary. I know this is great. Great video. But anyways, you can download the latest binary. Once you've already got it, once you've got it downloaded, you go choose file, select that binary that you downloaded, and update. Okay? So if you want to update to the latest version, just do this. Just do this. So that's that. I do want to set it up so that it goes to my Wi-Fi network. All right? So we're going to go to Wi-Fi setup, and I'm going to put in my uh, Wi-Fi information. Now, this brings up another problem. Some folks definitely have the problem of uh, they come to this point, they put in their... SSID and password, and then it never connects to their network. There was a time where if you had special characters uh, in your password for your home Wi-Fi, it wouldn't work with WLED. I thought that got resolved. I thought that they fixed that. It's also possible that when you put it in, especially if you're like copying and pasting, that maybe you maybe it adds a space, a blank space at the end of the password. So that may be it. It also may be a router problem. Maybe the router's uh, limiting, you know, adding certain things to the network. Maybe you've got some kind of security stuff going. Security, Pfft. ha, lame. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, the other, the other big one, and this is probably a common one, is the whole 5 gigahertz versus 2.4 gigahertz issue. So all of these controllers only work on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Most of us now at this point have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and 2.4 gigahertz or 2.4 and 5, whatever. I just feel like most of our devices, like our, our, our phones and our tablets and stuff, they're all going to use the 5 gigahertz. But these old controllers, like old controllers, but these, these low power kind of cheap controllers, they are going to use the 2.4 still. So if you have two Wi-Fi networks, maybe you have two different names and passwords, if one of them is, is, for, is 5 gigahertz, one's 2.4, make sure you use the 2.4 on this. If you have one name for both, so it's the same name and the same password for both, the router should figure that out and be able to connect. But I can't say that's going to always be the thing. If you have unified devices, disable Wi-Fi roaming. There's a good, there's a good, let's look at this again. Oh, there's my kids. Yay, kids. All right, so we're here on this. We're going to go now to WLED, the app. Okay, this is the easiest way. You, if, you're a, if you're a whiz with your router and you can get in your router and you can find IP addresses, then great, do that. If not, the app will do it for you. Okay, once you have your WLED controller connected to your home Wi-Fi network, you can go to the WLED app, Android or iPhone, click the plus, click discover lights. All right, mine says it found a bunch. So I'm going to now hit the check mark and I'm going to go see what it found. This one, this brand new one here, this says WLED and it's got the IP address 192.168.1.38. That I am 99% sure is this brand new controller here. I could go right into it here and we could start controlling it right here. But I like to do it on the computer and you guys are watching on my, my screen. My computer screen is easier to see than this phone. So we're going to go there. So that IP address was 38 was the IP address, right? 
bum, bada, bum. Okay, here's the, here it is right here. Great. When you're on a computer, I highly recommend using PC mode. It just makes it so easy to see so many things all at the same time. Let's do a couple more things, okay? Once you get to this point where you've got the IP address, it's connected to your home network, you've got the IP address, you're looking at the controller uh, in all its glory. Let's go into the config and let's do a few things, okay? Let's do a few things. All right, Wi-Fi setup, we already did this. I like to give it a specific name so that you can easily connect to it if your .local stuff works, which mine does like half the time, maybe. <laughs> but this, just give it a name uh, that is something that you recognize. So WLED-Pixie.local, that's what this one will be called for me. If I didn't want to use the IP address, I could use WLED-Pixie.local and it should pull up. If it loses connection to the network, then it will start to broadcast its access point again. I think it's also helpful if you put a name in here that also corresponds to the name you have up here so that if one of them is not connecting and it's broadcasting its access point, you can see which access point or which controller it is because the access point name represents the controller. So I'm going to put Pixie in here as well. Oh, that was the part I didn't put in. When the Wi-Fi, when I was connecting to the WLED access point Wi-Fi network, I didn't have to put the password in because it has saved the password, but it's WLED1234. And that's what it is here. So if this does disconnect and you need to reconnect with WLED Pixie, uh, it's going to be WLED1234 lowercase, right? You can give it some instructions like uh, app, app, AP opens when after no connection after boot, that's when it's going to open the access point. You can set it to never. You can set it to always. You can set it so that it only works in access point mode. This would be really good if you were like doing it, um, you're putting this in your car or something and you don't have a Wi-Fi router for it to connect to. In order to connect to it and change it, you've got to connect to it directly. You can set it to always and it will always broadcast the access point, which it will do anyways if you don't connect it to a router. But you can, you get a little bit of control there. And then this is what somebody was talking about. If you, I don't remember who it was that said it, disable Wi-Fi sleep. I do turn this on every time because if they disconnect, then sometimes power cycling them is what you have to do. You can maybe connect to the access point, but it's just easy this way. Just disable Wi-Fi sleep and then it stays connected to your network. Sound okay? Anyways, we're going to save that. So now that we've changed that name to a couple things, we're going to save it. It's going to like reboot real quick, reconnect to my network, hopefully. Otherwise, this will be a very short stream. So that was Wi-Fi setup. So that's all stuff we need to change Wi-Fi setup. LED preferences. Okay, this hangs up a lot of people as well. So pay attention here. Pay attention. Pay attention. Total LED count. I've had people say, oh, I hook up, you know, 100 LEDs and only 30 of them come on. Well, this is why. You have to set your total LED count right here to whatever your actual total LED count is. If you're connecting 250 LEDs to this, then you need to put this at 250 LEDs because it will only control the number of LEDs that you put in here. So in this case, we're going to use one of these uh, fairy light strings. So we're going to set this to 50 because there are 50 LEDs in there. It, this gives you a nice recommended power supply. Okay, great. This says, you know, three amp power supply. You don't, this, especially with these little pixie lights, it's not going to use that much. Uh, as it says here, for most effects, one amp is enough. Right now it's using 0.16 amps. So it's just, it's just connected to the controller. There's no uh, LEDs connected to it right now, but it is using 0.16 amps. I'm looking at it on my bench power supply. Automatic brightness limiter. So what this is, is a software current control. Okay. There's nothing on the Did You Know or DigiQuad or Pixel Pro that measures the current that the, that the lights are consuming. But it can calculate. WLED can calculate what it's probably using based on the number of LEDs and the type of LEDs and the effect and color and effect that you use. So right now it is set to not allow the lights to draw more than 0.85 amps, right? 850 milliamps, 0 0.85 amps. That's pretty dim. If you set this to say 400, you're putting 400 lights on this. If you don't change this, they'll be really dim. You can kind of be like, geez, I thought these lights would be brighter. What you want to set it to generally is something about the level of your power supply. So if you were going to hook up a three amp power supply here, you might want to set this to something just below that three amps. So you don't overwork your power supply. I will set the amp limiter to the limit of your wire. Power supply won't fail, but the wire will catch fire. Yeah, sure. Where this really, really matters is if you're using like jumpers, because jumper wires are like, what, 24, 20, 26. You can overpower these, the jumper wires pretty easily. If you go real high, it gives you this awesome warning. <laughs> your power supply supplies a high current to improve the safety of your setup. Please use thick cables, multiple power injection points, which is the same as using thick cables because you're just multiplying the, the amount of uh, copper that the current can pass through or a fuse and or a fuse. Okay. So we're not going to do that. If we had a three amp power supply and tiny wires, and we set this to, to this, we might as well just turn it off, which you can do, but I would not recommend turning it off. We're going to set it to a thousand just because that's what that does. Don't forget to address it. If you're having problems. Next part of this um, brightness limiter is this, the max current for a single LED. This gives you the option of telling WLED what kind of pixels or what kind of LEDs you're using so that it can make that calculation. The default is the highest. So I've, I've yet to find, honestly, a, an LED, a pixel like this, an RGB pixel that even on white max brightness, that's going to use 55 milliamps. But that keeps you safe, right? That's like the most conservative you can do is just leave it at this. Depending on what you're doing, you could use 12 volts, which sets it to 30 milliamps, which they're going to be even less than that probably. And then this gives you now the option of WS2815. And it says those are only going to use 12 milliamps. That's really low. I didn't realize they were that uh, low power consumption. But is that because they're also 12 volts? I think they're also 12 volts. Or custom. You could say, oh, well, I think my LEDs are better. They're only going to take whatever, 20 milliamps, right? Do you put that in there? That's my rule of thumb. Hardware setup, this is where you get to tell it what kind of LEDs you have. In most cases, you're not going to need to change it. WS28, one something, usually 11 or 12. Um, th then there's the others you could pick from, and that's great. This matters a lot because this pin is the LED output pin. If you're using an ESP8266 on a DigiUno or Quad, then you would set that to two. 
Uh, if you're just using a Node MCU or whatever, you could set it to whatever you want, but two is a good one. And the Pixel Pro, the default is two. But on the Unos and Quads, if you're using ESP32, which is all the new ones, then this you want to set to 16. If I wanted to set two, this is a did Uno, so I could set another output as pin three and anything beyond LED 50 would be coming out of that. This one is important. If you want the button on the board here, or if you've got one of our Pixel Pros and you want to use the button on there, you've got to set this to a certain pin to be able to use the button as a button. I hate the smell of popcorn when I'm playing with electronics, right? I'm here playing with electronics. I got this board on my desk and I'm kind of wiggling it around and stuff. And I smell popcorn, which could very easily be confused for, you know, a melting resistor or something. <laughs> ah, a couple other things we'll play with here. Server description. This is how uh, this controller will sort of announce itself, okay, uh, to the app and such. So we are going to call it Pixie. Pixie. Okay. Send and receive. We're not going to play with that right now. We're going to just leave the UI stuff the same. Although I will, I do really like this random uh, background image. It just goes to this pick some photos thing on the interwebs and it grabs a random picture uh, to use as the background. I, I think that's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm grateful for that. So we'll do that. And we're going to save it. When it goes back to the UI, now we're going to have this cool background, whatever, right? We've got some Amish kids and, you know, whatever's going on back there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, but then it says WLED Pixie over here. Okay. So that's, and then when we look at it in the app, it will also now say WLED Pixie instead of just WLED. Oh, what this one's doing, this is actually grabbing all the other instances that I currently have connected, or at least the, what it, the ones it knows about. It almost acts like the app where it will uh, detect other instances of WLED and uh, give you the opportunity to very quickly switch to, uh, switch to that one, right? So we go back to nodes. I can now switch back and forth between those two pretty quickly. So if you have a bunch of them, that's a great, great way to switch back and forth between them. Some of you, some people have uh, written to me too and said, oh no, I, I took the, the controller off the top and it broke. The ESP32s, when they're coming soldered from the factory in China, they're soldering on two strips or four strips really of headers. You only need three. So we've been sending a blank uh, female header strip to just cover those pins, but you don't have to have it. If it falls off and you can't find it because it went under the couch or something, that's fine. This is really a tight fit these days too. That's how you just pull it off. And it's okay if this female receiver strip there is missing. Connecting here, we've got ground in the first one. So we'll put the ground, this says a red, and then it's always, it's always positive and then data and then ground. So we're gonna connect the positive to the positive side that's over here. It's this far one, get in there. All right, and then we're gonna use the, the GPIO 16, which is this pin, oops, sorry, out of frame. It's this one, okay, that's the data. And now the ground goes on here. All right, double check our connections. Ground is to ground, data is to data and power or positive is to positive. Okay, great. So we can put this back on here now. And this is what I was saying. Sometimes this is a little bit tight, a little bit tricky, but, and the fuse kind of bumps into that, which is good. We don't want, we want this to not be accessible once you've got this thing connected here. Uh, okay, so that's that, great. So now we can plug our LEDs in. Oh, there's our LEDs lit up. What would cause WLED to keep losing all my settings such as effect colors and segments? So Jesse's putting in like effects, I'm assuming, like, you know, setting up segments and then they're not being saved when you restart. Set the segments, then you must save it as a preset. Oh, maybe that's it, Liddy. Okay, you, Liddy, got it. So zero to 10, 11 to 40, 50. And now we need to save this. We need to have all these together, create a preset, call it segs, <laughs> and save it. If we restart, save and reboot. It saves them as a preset. You're right, there you go. Thank you, Phil. Copy all my presets from one to another. Oh man, I did that one time, Morel. How did we do that, guys? I think you could go, I mean, you could go like back and forth between your two controllers here and you say, okay, I want, so you can grab this here and you can copy it from one to the other. Don't use current state and paste it in. So you could do that. That's one, that's, that's one method. You can just switch back and forth and basically copy the things out of one, copy things out of one controller uh, and into the other. And it makes it pretty easy with uh, the instance list to switch back and forth between them. There was another way to download them and upload them. Slash edit, maybe? Okay. Yes. Choose a file. Upload. There we go. There we go. Here we go. This is it. This is the, this is the other one I was thinking. Of. So let's say you spend a lot of time and you've got a ton of presets and you don't want to do them one at a time like I just did. Um, thank you very much, C Sharp Worm. Perfect. So you can go here. You can go to the presets JSON file. That's this bunch of stuff here. You can right click and download that file. Okay. Download it wherever you want. Okay. Then you go to your other controller. So in this case, I'm going to go to controller number 38. Oops, not 138. That's 38 and go to slash edit. And then I can upload a file. So if I choose a file, I go to my desktop where I just downloaded the presets JSON, open and upload. 
It should overwrite that presets with this presets. I think that's what just happened. I don't know. Did it? Maybe. <laughs> reboot, reboot, reboot. That's true. That's a good, that's a good point. If you, you, you probably have to reboot it for the effects to take effect. <laughs> All right. Who, how are we going to sign off? Should we sign off like our heads are sunburned? Ready? Hey. Ow. As oh, always. Oh, thanks. Ow, for watching. Ow, ow. Until next time. Ow, ow, ow. Adios. Dawson got a mohawk and then went to football practice without a helmet and burned his head. <laughs>